Hi, everyone. Welcome to our unofficial start. I just wanted to remind everyone we've got everybody on mute until we get going. Um, we're also just recording the unofficial start, which we don't normally do, but just because it's one of the topics that we'll be covering today. If we wanted to be part of the recording for those who can't join us live. But thanks everyone for joining early. We'll get started here in just a moment. <laughs> Thanks, Maritza, for our first caption. Welcome, if you're just joining, I just wanna let you know we are recording this unofficial start, which we don't normally do, just because it's one of the topics we'll be covering. And just to get everybody's creative minds going, we're gonna ask you to contribute a caption, if one comes to you, for this photo, using the chat function. If you're new to Zoom, the chat is a voice, uh, box you might have to hover your mouse over the bottom or top of your screen to reveal it and then you can send a chat to everyone or to individuals on the on the list you can also reveal the participants list to see who else is, has joined already <laughs> i see i see john uh channeling cat versus dog Keep, keep those creative captions coming and we'll get started here in a few minutes. So we'll read some of these out loud so that people watching the recording later can, can see or hear what, what you're coming up with since the, the chat window itself won't show up on the recording. So Maritza's uh, caption for this photo is, you are home? Totally caught off, that cat is totally caught off guard. <laughs> Don says, the dog did it. Mm -hmm. Even though the cat is clearly all wrapped up in the, in the toilet paper. Again, if you're just joining us, this is what we call our unofficial start. It's a chance to test all your settings, make sure that your camera and your microphone work. We love to see faces on this. And so if you are open to turning on your camera, we welcome that. That's a good time to make sure you're familiar with some of the Zoom features like finding the chat box, finding the speech bubble icon to turn on your, open up the chat box. And then uh, a way to practice using the chat box is, or, uh, inviting you to write a caption for this photo that you see on the slide. And the photo is of a cat that has gotten entangled in a roll of toilet paper with shreds all over the floor. And the a, toilet a paper being a hot commodity these commodity, days. Yes. <laughs> if you're having any technical difficulties, you can use the chat to contact Nicole Young and we'll, tr we'll troubleshoot as we go along. If you're having trouble seeing anything that we're describing or using the chat function or figuring out how to mute or unmute yourself or show your video, I'll point out for those of you who might be new to Zoom, there are ways to change the view of what you're seeing on the screen. You can alternate between speaker view and gallery view, you might see that in a corner of your screen. Um, gallery view lets you see all the participants. Um, depending on how large your screen is, you might see a subsection and have to scroll around a bit. On my screen, I can see about 10 of you at a time, plus this cute cat. So here's another caption. I've heard I'm rolling in gold. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy, for that one. Here, we'll give people a couple more minutes to join, and then we'll get going. So why can I see five and you can see 10? 
It's just the size of my screen. Um, if, if you want to grab a corner of the window that's open for your Zoom meeting, you might be able to see more people at a time and they might display differently depending on... Do you, do you see some arrows at the, at the sides or top and bottom of how many people you've got? Yeah, I've got yeah. five. Yeah, and um, then you can just scroll around and you'll see more. Oh, oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> I never knew that. I've been to so many Zoom meetings and I never knew that. Well, and then you'll see some people's just uh, their names instead of the videos. Oh, yes. Um, yes. And, and we want everyone to feel comfortable um, showing whatever they'd like or not. So right. we'll get into that in a moment too. But that's why you might see a, a picture, a static picture instead of a live video feed. Got it. So for example, if I turned off my video feed, you would see just a, a picture of me from many haircuts ago. <laughs> that's kind of the past. Okay, got a few more people joining. We've got Nicole Young's uh, channeling this disappointed cat. Is this one ply? I prefer two ply. Welcome everyone. We'll get started in just a minute here. We're showing you this unofficial start and recording it, which we don't normally do just because this is one of the tools that we'll be featuring today in our overview of ways to make these meetings a little livelier. So feel free, as if you're just joining, you have a clever caption for this picture to share it through the chat. If you have any technical difficulties, use the chat to contact Nicole Young and we'll try and troubleshoot whatever's going on. The chat is a little voice box uh, icon. You might have to scroll over the top or, your, or bottom of your screen to reveal it. And you can also toggle back and forth between the speaker and gallery view to see more of the participants. Okay, Nicole, do you think we should get going? Give a couple more minutes, nodding, okay. So let's officially start our chat today. Welcome if you're just joining and thanks for joining early for those of you who did. Um, I'd like to introduce the two of us first and then we'll get going with some other introductions. I'm Nicole Lezen, one of two local consultants who are co-facilitators of the core process that you'll hear more about in just a moment. And I'm Nicole Young, the other core consultant. Okay. Thanks, so let's, let's try something using the, the Zoom feature. If you can give a high five to somebody next to you, and you put can your, put your hand unmute your and hand. say hello. <laughs> Great. A little movement. Thanks for doing that. So today we're going to talk about some tips for having livelier interactive Zoom meetings. I know we've all been on a lot of these lately, and we are looking forward to learning from you as well. Um, the, the context for all of this is the collective of results and evidence-based or core investments. And as I mentioned, Nicole Young and I are the co-facilitators of that process. So some of you have already been to other core trainings and events and already know this, but for those of you who might be newer to core, we just thought we'd go over a quick overview of this local initiative that's a countywide initiative it's both a funding model and a movement to achieve equitable health and well-being for everyone in our county using a results-based collective impact approach. And so this has been in place for several years and has a lot of different moving parts and elements to it. But through the participation of many partners throughout the county, multiple funders, service agencies, public agencies, and, and many of you participating in core events like our larger core conversations and smaller uh, trainings, we developed a mission and vision statement that you see here, and both of those have equity at the center. And when we talk about equitable health and well-being, what we mean by that is that everyone across the lifespan has the same equitable opportunities to experience these eight core conditions, 
and the, the core conditions for health and well-being. So we're guessing that many of you are have your work um, centered in one or more of these. And an important part of this are the not just the equities at the center, but that the connecting dots across all of these are, are really important, that none of these things happen in isolation. So by equity, we mean that the opportunities and outcomes are not predicted by someone's race, sexual orientation, immigration status, ethnicity, zip code, any other defining characteristics. These chats are part of a broader effort to sh build shared knowledge and inspire this kind of collective action among all of us. And we have been working to develop a core institute for innovation and impact, an, a sort of umbrella for offering new and existing trainings and building capacity across our county that advances CORE's mission and vision. So these coffee chats are part of that, that CORE Institute. We have been focusing, as many of you know, on a variety of topics, some of which have been very uh, tool-oriented like these to use Zoom and others that are more about broader responses to COVID-19. As we go through our exercises today, We'll be asking for your feedback um, during and after this meeting. We're always open to your suggestions for different topics so that we can meet your needs as you're trying to respond to this crisis as well. So let's go over the agenda quickly. We're going to demonstrate some of the tools that we've been using and also some, some that are new to us. And if you have suggestions as we go through, please share them in the chat. We're going to talk about ways to use different kinds of icebreakers and the unofficial start that many of you experienced already. We'll have a couple of mindful moment types of um, examples, as well as some different kinds of tools for collaborating in this virtual environment. Some of these may be more familiar than others, and today is really just an overview of some very quick examples that we have found helpful or intriguing you may want to explore more of them in more detail. So consider these just sort of a, a tasting menu of some options that are out there. At the end, we're gonna raffle off some time with the Nicoles to explore these in more detail. So stay, stay to the end for that. And I just wanted to, to for those of you who've been participating in prior coffee chats, We've been doing introductions through the chat itself, and today we're going to practice something a little different um, using some breakout groups. So the, the whole idea here is to adapt the tools that you're using to your situation. So today it looks like we have about 40 of you joining us. So that's a good size group. Um, certainly you could use the chat to ask people to explain who they are and what organization they're representing. But today we're gonna, as an icebreaker, we're gonna use a, a feature of Zoom called breakout rooms. So some of you have, may have already used those. And the way that's gonna work is that you're gonna see a box like the one you see on the screen here. And when I give you the, the sign, you'll click join to join the breakout group. And these will be smaller groups so that we have a chance to introduce ourselves to each other with just a few people instead of 40 people. So we'll be in the breakout rooms for three minutes in this exercise, and then we'll get a 30 second warning that you're gonna be sent back to the main room, which is where we are now. This is the main Zoom meeting with all of us together. So when you see that 30 second warning, you'll wanna make sure that everybody's been introduced and kind of wrap things up, but you don't have to actually do anything to be sent back to the breakout room. We can go into more detail about this at another time about how to use this function, but for now we're just going to illustrate it with this exercise. So what we want you to do is pick something that's a, an easy reach, arm's length or maybe a couple steps away, that gives you some sense of comfort or, or is a de-stressor for you um, in these times. So as an example, I have a funny calendar on my desk that somebody gave me that's got kind of um, raunchy pet quotes, I would say. <laughs> and I, I just sometimes read ahead because it's so funny to me and it makes me laugh and I appreciate that. But it might be something else for you. What we're going to do when we go into the breakout rooms is share that with each other. So are you ready? Can you give me a, a nod or a thumbs up? Ready to try it? Okay, um, let's do this.
but I'll do it. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. So I hope you got a chance to meet some old friends and colleagues and maybe some new people too and, and share something that was helping you de-stress or bringing you comfort these days. So how was that for everybody? Can you want to share some ideas in the chat? As you're doing that, one of the one of the nice things about doing these meetings with a colleague like Nicole Young is that we can alternate kind of harvesting comments from the chat. If you have an opportunity to, to do this with somebody, it's super helpful because I, I personally am not a great multitasker and it is just hard to concentrate on the content at the same time that you're trying to track people's comments. So if you can have somebody that's helping you see what's, what's coming up through the chat, that's a really great bonus. So we've got a, a question about how to do chat rooms. I think, Ed, maybe you mean the breakout rooms like we just did. It's a, it's a feature um, within Zoom that you can set up. We can go over that in an, at another time too and send out some information after the meeting because we, we want to move on with some other things right now. Um, some of you talked about fun to meet new people and meet people on a deeper level. Um, and so we've got some different, um, different levels of expertise with Zoom, which is true of us as well. We're always learning new things. Um, and it's, it is nice to just see people in different ways. So a lot of you are making those kinds of comments. So uh, practice definitely does make better. Definitely agree with that. So there are some variations on these kinds of exercises too. So as I mentioned earlier, you want to adapt them to your situation, particularly the size of the group. But in a smaller group, you might want to do um, a similar sort of prompt and just do a round robin of the, the answers without sending people into um, different kinds of breakout rooms because you don't need to if you just have a smaller group. You might want to have people um, share things in alphabetical order or maybe pass a, a speaking baton to the next person they see on the uh, the gallery view there of the, the different um, names and faces that you might see. You could have different kinds of questions or prompts um, depending on the purpose of your meeting. Maybe you're doing something that's a, a team building meeting. Maybe it's something um, we, we did a uh, something that brings you comfort or is a de-stressor, you might ask people to share an object or something that's more closely tied to their identity. Um, there are just lots of different ways to use the visual um, version of Zoom to connect and to, to share something that's important to people um, and without making a big deal about it. It doesn't have to be something that comes off a high shelf and out of the back of a closet, or, or it could be just something that's meaningful to you around you on your desk like we did today. You can also use different kinds of games um, in this same kind of format. So you might want to do an adaptation of some kind of analog game like Pictionary or Hangman um, and use the Zoom whiteboard to draw things. So some of those can get more involved and sometimes it's a trade-off of does it take longer to set it up than to actually play it but there are just so many options and we just wanted to share a couple ideas with you. So I'll turn things over now to Nicole Young um, and we'll switch I'll, I'll go on mute and she's going to describe how to use the unofficial start time which some of you experienced. Right, and this was an idea that I learned from participating in a uh, a meeting that someone else facilitated and so they were talking about that kind of typical awkward period when people join early sometimes that happens in in-person meetings also people, you know those early birds arrive which we always love and then sometimes there's this awkward silence like what do I do now um, and especially with a lot of people trying to learn how to use some of these different video conferencing platforms it's just a great opportunity to encourage people to join early use that time to get familiar with the settings, things like muting and unmuting and turning their video camera on and off. 
um, but also give them something to do. And it can be a way to to start engaging people from the get-go. Um, and it could be something humorous like we used this morning where we asked people to look at the photo of this cat all tangled up in toilet paper, which is a precious commodity these days, and write a caption for the photo in the chat box. So we had some great funny examples uh, that came up. So it could be something like that. It can be you know, some kind of a discussion prompt. This is one that we used in last week's coffee chat where we ask people to think about one thing they've done while sheltering in place that they wouldn't have considered or been able to do before COVID-19. And so we had a lot of nice examples of either hobbies or quality time or different ways that people are spending their time um, that have actually, for a lot of people, been uh, something enjoyable. And so it can be a, a discussion prompt that just sets a little bit of light reflection, but also sets the stage for participation in your meeting. This is another example from a parenting workshop that, um, that we did a couple weeks ago. And again, use the discussion prompt as a way to set the stage for the discussion. So asking, what has been the highlight of your week so far? And this was a workshop that was done on a Friday. So again, it got people thinking about the positive aspects of parenting before we talked about some of the challenges uh, in the workshop. And you can also use it as a time to, again, just get people mentally ready or emotionally ready to start to dig a little bit deeper in your meeting. So another deep, kind of a deeper discussion prompt, what is one thing that life is teaching you right now? This could be a great one, especially right now, as so many people are still trying to figure out how to adapt and adjust uh, to sheltering in place and thinking about how this might change some of our daily norms. Uh, so lots of different ways you can use that unofficial start as both just giving people something to do as they join their meeting early, but also setting the stage for what you're about to do in that meeting or workshop or training or whatever it might be. And you'll see some of these cards that, or these boxes with the prompts that we're showing on the slides actually come from other sources. And this is a, a resource that uh, I came across a few years ago and I like their discussion prompts, which aren't really anything uh, totally radical or new, but just it's nice to have examples to draw from. So we and me, we and me is a website. And these are also listed in the, handout that we sent with the email this morning and that I uploaded to the chat box. So if you're interested in checking out some of the links that we're sharing or some of the resources we're sharing, those uh, are there for you as well. So those are just some ways that we've used the unofficial start. So again, it's just a good thing to plan for as part of your meeting design. So when you're developing your agenda, when we develop our agendas for these coffee chats, we build that in as an agenda item. So we're planning for it, we're preparing for it, we have something um, ready to go. And as Nicole was saying earlier, it helps to have, if possible, one person that's the verbal greeter, like Nicole Lesn was this morning, and another person that is kind of managing the tech side of things, can be responding to or creating that virtual dialogue in the chat box. So it's a great way to tag team and have uh, multiple roles, multiple people helping. And so that's our tip around making use of that unofficial start time. It also helps with starting meetings on time, especially if uh, people are newer to Zoom or whatever platform you're using. So again, make that part of your reminder emails or part of your announcements about the events that you're encouraging people to, that, to be ready participants as well, that they're planning ahead for their time, that they can join early, get themselves ready, so that you can start on time. Okay. Then our next tip that we wanted to share. We had mentioned in the registration email that we would cover some ways to incorporate movement and, and mindfulness and self-care into your virtual meetings. Um, because we know just from our own experiences that these are stressful times, um, not only because of all the disruptions in our daily lives and all the, the stress and worries about many people in our community and, and the impact they're feeling. So it's stressful times as it is. Virtual meetings have been a great tool for a lot of people. 
And also a lot of people are feeling that fatigue of staring at screens all day, even more so than, uh, than in usual work days. There's something very different about interacting with people over video, even though it's still nice to be able to see human faces, hear human voices. There is something very different about interacting uh, over a video conference versus in-person meetings. And so uh, we're hearing more and more, and sometimes we feel it too, just that, that fatigue set in, the headaches, uh, just feeling really drained after, especially if you have a day of back-to-back -back, uh, virtual meetings. In some ways, it's been great to not have to account for, tr for travel time between meetings. And in other ways, uh, I, I know I find myself falling into that trap of, ooh, now it's easier to schedule back-to-back, back-to-back, to back virtual meetings because you don't have to build in that travel time. So a couple tips that we have and suggestions and things that we'll practice today, just building in, building in those mindful moments. Um, acknowledging that and giving people your, and including yourselves, um, that explicit permission up front to take care of yourselves in whatever way you, you need to in order to stay engaged in a meeting. So whether that means sitting, standing, moving around, walking around, um, you might find that it's helpful to mute yourselves if, you're, if your meeting host hasn't already muted you, uh, to mute yourself, even turn off your, your camera if you need to stand up and stretch. There's something very freeing about knowing that you can do that and still be listening and still be um, participating without always have to be staring at the screen or feeling like you're always on uh, camera. And so we want to invite you to give yourselves permission to do that during this, even though it's a brief workshop to do that. If you need to eat or take you know, body breaks, biological breaks, feel free to do that. Just remember to mute yourselves. <laughs> Turn off your camera if you are taking a, a, a bathroom break. Um, but and, and we also just know that we expect um, and often have situations where we see kids popping into the camera or pets or other people that you're sharing a space with. And so just knowing that that is, at least right now, that is the norm. Um, and so sometimes even just in your own meetings, uh, creating space for that, acknowledging that can relieve a lot of the stress and pressure that uh, many people feel in these in kind of this virtual environment. Um, and then whenever you can, or as much as you can, build in, even if it's just for a minute at a time, small stretch breaks. And you might use visuals like the ones we're showing on the slide here. One is of um, different kind of animations of, you know, people doing stretching movements. The other one says, just breathe. And so sometimes even just having those visual reminders can be a nice prompt um, or, Let's actually practice one of the ones um, that we see on the screen here where uh, I'm looking at it and it's the top right corner where the animation shows someone stretching their arm behind their head. And so I'm going to invite all of you to stretch your arm over your head. That person in the drawing has their other arm behind their back, but I'm going to use that. I guess maybe actually I'm doing uh, one of the other drawings and then switch sides. And as you do that, just take in some deep breaths in, and exhale. Do that a couple times if you'd like. So whether you do that on your own in meetings, this is another one of my favorite ones. Stretching my arm across my body, pressing my elbow. So whether you just do that on your own during virtual meetings or you as a facilitator include some prompts and, and time for those stretches, some breathing, um, maybe even some mindfulness exercises. When you combine all that, that's what we would call dynamic mindfulness where you're doing both the action and the breathing and, and centering your mind. Um, those are can, can be really short, but very effective ways to just re-energize people or keep up the attention and the focus so that you can go on and and continue your your meeting business okay so that was a little demo of a mindful moment and so at this one i'm going to stop my screen share because nicole lesson is going to walk us through a couple tools for 
virtual collaboration. And I'll just say before I mute myself again, we know that we're going through these fairly quickly. And so if you have questions, uh, feel free to type them in the chat box, or if you want to contribute other ideas as we're going through some of these, some of the things that work well for you, feel free to add those to the, to the chat box as well. Thanks, Nicole. Alyssa, I know you had a specific question about screen sharing. So um, Nicole Young and I are going to share um, hosting responsibilities so we can see each other's screens and share our screens with you. And so what I'm going to go over now are some options for sharing uh, collaborative work on a particular document. So first, I'll use my screen sharing to pull up a Word document that's on my computer. And this is an example of if I were uh, just taking notes, so I can, you want to be careful about what you're sharing on your computer, but hopefully you can see now a document that's just very simple. It says meeting notes from today. I've got some ideas for icebreakers and maybe I'll do some um, mindfulness exercises. So I'm just literally taking notes as we're talking. And that's sometimes a useful thing to do as you're uh, if you've got one person who's controlling something, but you want everyone to see it. So the downside of this is that other people can't weigh in with their ideas and participate, but it's also sometimes just the only thing that you need. Somebody needs to see what's in front of you on the screen and you can all react to it, but you don't necessarily need to be editing in live time. But let's say that you did want to collaborate on a document. And so we use Google Docs a lot for that. You can use other collaborative tools. You can have a document that you're sharing in another way through Dropbox, for example, some kind of cloud-based um, mechanism. But we're going to use Google Docs right now to show you how we can participate jointly in uh, building a document. So this is a document that's got suggestions from you for future topics. It's set to be a shared, editable, linked uh, document. Nicole Young is going to put the link into the chat so you can open another window if you're on a computer so that you can see our Zoom meeting and also be working on this document at the same time. Or if you don't have room for that on your screen, you might want to toggle back and forth between, because you don't need to see me talking, um, but you could see this particular document up on your screen. And just so that we don't have 45 different people editing this at once, I'll invite you, if your first name starts with the letters A through G, and you have an idea for a coffee chat topic, go ahead and populate this document. You should be able to I see a lot of different um, people joining now. So you can uh, go ahead and just click under one of these topic areas. These are just some, some ways to organize these ideas or add a new one if you'd like. And then we should all be able to see your contributions. One thing that Google does is if you're not signed in, so none of us have an identity um, in Google in, in sharing this, uh, this document. You'll get these funny names like anonymous chameleon. <laughs> so someone's talking about um, adding bilingual Zoom meetings. We've got um, some other ways to, to uh, contribute to these documents that can help you gather ideas the same way you might on a flip chart in a in a uh, live meeting. So what you want to balance here is how unwieldy it might get. So if a lot of people are contributing at the same time, this would not be a good way to do kind of line edits on a document. But it's a great way to just collect some ideas. Um, Anonymous Dingo is, is offering a solution here. <laughs> Um, it does help to have some structure ahead of time. So you don't want to necessarily start with a completely blank slate. This just helps people figure out how to, um, how to capture some ideas in different categories. But you can probably think of different ways to use something like this. It's um, something you can sort of play with um, a bit if you haven't used it before. We've got somebody drawing a line. <laughs> Um, solutions to adaptive behaviors as a suggestion. So you can see how people can 
can add some ideas and then you can discuss them as a group because everyone can see them and everyone can participate. But again, that's not necessarily the thing you want to do if you've got lots and lots of people. So true for Google Docs, you just want to make sure that you've set um, the, the document settings to anyone with the link can edit it because uh, sometimes that's not a default. It might be that only you can, people can see it but not edit. So the editing function is something you have to set. But then you have a name for your document and you share the URL for it um, through the chat. And then people can do exactly what we're doing now. So if you have questions about this kind of mechanism or can see other ways to use it, please feel free to have some discussion in the chat there. Okay, there we go. And Nicole uh, Young had mentioned that if you have a large group like this, you can split people up by the different letters of the alphabet and we'll be using that as well. So now that we've done that, let's try another mindful moment. And we have some links in the tool document that was shared before the meeting and in the chat and that we'll send out afterwards for chair yoga. So if you've done any kind of yoga standing or on a mat, you can adapt a lot of poses to a chair. They're really nice to do for this kind of meeting. So like all stretches in yoga, you don't want anybody to hurt themselves. So a good practice is to just ask people to put their feet flat on the floor. You could do something like this gentleman is doing by clasping hands above his head, or we could do a quick cat cow, which just means, so just to echo the cat in the toilet paper to start with, that we started with in our unofficial start. A cat pose is just arching your back a bit and moving your head back. And again, nothing dangerous, just a little stretch. And then the cow is to go back over. Actually, I think I've got those reversed. I apologize. Um, you put your chin down to your chest and round your back a bit. So it's just a little bit of a spine stretch. You might want to roll your shoulders. So we've got some other ideas for chair yoga in the document. Um, I'm sure you have some ideas yourselves. So just again, to, as Nicole mentioned earlier, just an option to move a little bit since we're doing a lot of sitting around and staring at screens. So with that, I'll turn back to Nicole Young for some other cool tools that we can use. Okay, so the tools that Nicole covered just a moment ago are great for Again, co-editing, co-creating documents, taking meeting notes while you're in a meeting and then everybody can see them. Um, there are, and as Nicole mentioned, there are some um, things to be aware of or that are kind of potential limitations around using things like Google Docs for brainstorming. It can quickly get um, overwhelming or, or kind of uh, hard to follow if there are large groups of people. And I know that there are several other facilitators on the call, and uh, a lot of us like to use post-its, right, for or sticky notes for different exercises and brainstorming. And so um, we're going to show you a couple tools that we've recently learned of and have been experimenting with, where you could get almost the the same experience or very similar experience uh, using online whiteboards and online sticky notes. And so. This is one that we thought would be helpful to share because it's pretty simple to use. It's pretty straightforward. And so in terms of a learning curve or being you know, technologically savvy, it's a pretty low threshold. You wouldn't um, hopefully have too many barriers with that. So the site itself is called Idea Boards with a Z. Um, it's free. You do have to sign up for an account if you want to be able to save your boards. Um, but there's no cost associated with it. And so I've set up a board here just uh, to use as a demo, and I've given it a name. And so we're going to stick with this theme of generating ideas for copy chat topics. So I've named the board copy chat topics. And um, it helps to, if you can think of what kinds of things are you wanting to generate, what uh, categories of topics or kind of buckets of themes or, or ideas they're trying to generate, 
if you think about that in advance, it helps just with organizing the post-its itself or the sticky notes themselves on the board. And so I created these categories of potential topics and potential guest speakers. And the ways that participants can create sticky notes is just like clicking on one of the green icons there, the plus arrow, to add a sticky. And so you can see that Nicole Nellis and I were playing around with this. We uh, created some sticky notes just to have something showing, but uh, if I wanted to create another sticky note with a potential topic, just click on that green plus arrow and start typing in an idea, right? So maybe, uh, maybe it's communication strategies during COVID-19. And once I press enter, then that sticky note is saved. Um, and I can see that someone is already experimenting with this, yay, and added a, a potential guest speaker being parent leaders. That would be awesome. Um, and the cool thing about this particular uh, tool, online tool, is that you can actually have people vote for topics or speakers or whatever your post-its or sticky notes are. They're kind of like how we use dot voting or hash marks in an in-person meeting to show which ideas have the most interest or, um, or the most potential. You can do the same with these sticky notes. So to vote on one, someone would just need to hover over a sticky note, click on it, and it pops up oops, and shows my typo as well. And then you just vote on it by clicking on the vote up, the thumbs up icon. So it reflects on the vote has been counted. And so I can just click on the X to make that post it or sticky note they're back to a normal size and I can see that now there's been one vote added to this. And so Nicole Lesson, is the URL already in the chat box? Yes, so Nicole Lesson has added the URL for this idea board into the chat box. So I'm gonna invite people whose first names start with H through M. So go ahead and click on that link. And again, it should open up in a new web browser page for you. So you're not gonna be adding uh, on my screen, you'll be adding on your own device on the website. But go ahead and try creating one or two sticky notes, either to show your ideas about potential topics for future core copy chats or potential guest speakers. And if you like, any of the topics that are already on the sticky notes or that have been added, go ahead and vote for them by clicking on it. And clicking on the up thumb, the thumbs up. Robin's asking, should she be able to click on the links in the chat box and have the, the site open up directly. You should be able to, although it might depend on what device you're using. So it's possible that you have to copy and paste the link into a browser page. For a while there, Zoom actually did turn off the uh, hyperlink feature because there were some security loopholes around that, but they've fixed those and turned on the link sharing. Um, and so it might also be a matter of what version of the Zoom software you're using. So that might also be something to check to make sure you have the latest update. Okay, so I see a couple posts that got added here, parent leaders and community nonprofit leaders as guest speakers. And that's always great. And, and if you have specific names to add to them, let me show you one cool thing too about these, um, about this particular resource here. So let's say there's a particular uh, nonprofit leader and I'm just going to uh, say Nancy Sherrod because I know she's a great leader and she's a, she works with uh, NAMI, National Alliance for uh, Mentally Ill, right? And so let's say that then someone has suggested a, a more specific person or topic within one of these post-its. You can actually drag the post-it to merge it with one that is similar, a similar theme, or you want to group them together as a, 
as a category there. And then you could vote on that. Okay. So thank you to those of you that not only uh, helped us experiment and demonstrate this, but have added some concrete suggestions for us for copy chat. We will definitely uh, put those into the queue. So that's one that you can use for doing brainstorming, group thinking, design thinking, using something that resembles sticky notes. Another resource we're gonna show you is a tool called MindMeister. So this is, if you're familiar with things like mind mapping, this is a, a web-based tool. So again, you can have multiple people contributing to it. It's, um, there is a free version. I'm, I'm actually using the free version right now. If you decide to pay for a plan, then you get, you know, more features. Um, but I would say it's still, this is still a relatively easy to use uh, website tool. Um, some, some of the other software platforms or tools that we've taken a look at, like Miro or Mural or some um, Stormboard, some of those you might have heard before, really great tools, very comprehensive, cost, they tend to cost money and take a while to learn to use. And so we were trying to pick things that are free and uh, pretty simple to use. And so this is one where, um, and again, I've, I've started uh, mind map just to, so we have something to work with. The mind map, if you've ever done these in in-person meetings, usually start with a particular theme, our main topic. So again, we're sticking with this <clears throat> example of core copy chat topics. So that's the main theme that's in the center of this mind map. So basically I created a, a little rectangle here with that topic. And then in this mind map, I'm actually starting off with some categories, some predetermined categories like data and evaluation, facilitation, diversity, equity, inclusion, collective impact. So kind of broad categories, broad buckets of topics. Um, so for this example, I'm thinking it'd be helpful to start with some categories, kind of like the, the Google Docs that Nicole Lesson shared a few moments ago and then ask people to contribute their ideas around, okay, more specifically within data and evaluation, what top, topics would you be interested in? So a way to create the mind map is you start with your main theme, and then to add any new categories, you basically click on your main theme in the center, press tab, and it creates a new little bubble with an arm connecting that bubble. Oops, went away. To your main topic. And so if I wanted another topic like, let's say, parent leadership, and it would help if I can spell, might be another category that we'd want to add. And then if you want to add more specific topics, so within parent leadership or within collective impact or within data and evaluation, what specific topics would be of interest? To add more to this mind map, then you would click on a category. Again, press tab, and it creates a new bubble that's attached to that category. So maybe uh, you can say I added one earlier around data visualization. So now let's do one on creating surveys. And then as soon as you press enter, it should be there. And so are you all seeing the changes as I'm making them? Okay. Now, I, I believe with this one, so Nicole just, again, typed in the link to this MindMaster mind map. So if your first name starts with N through Z, go ahead and click on that or copy and paste it into a web page. And go ahead and experiment with it and, and try to click on any of the categories, or if you want to add a new category, click on the main topic, press tab to create a new bubble. Or if you want to add suggestions about specific topics to cover within any of the categories, click on one of the green ovals and again, press tab to enter your new suggestion. You can move around the map, so you can just like click and then drag the map so that you can get a better view. 
So I can see someone added families with children with special needs. Are you all seeing that update as it's happening? Someone added cool Zoom stuff. We'll give it another minute if anyone else wants to add more examples here. And let's see. I'm going to refresh my page just to make sure that we're, Nicole and I discovered last night that sometimes you have to re actually refresh the page to see the new suggestions that have been added. So I'll refresh it just to make sure we're capturing everything. And then we will Oop, I think we got it all. Okay. And so again, if you use something like this, just a couple of facilitation tips. Um, again, you might have to think about how you want to use something like this, depending on your group size and what the purpose of the exercise would be. You might decide that you want to have a really free forming, you know, free flowing brainstorming session where you're not providing categories in advance. So you could do that. Um, and sometimes the beauty and the fun of mind maps is that they get really messy. Like lots of, I mean, that's part of the purpose, right? That you're just doing this rapid brainstorming, it's quantity over quality, and then you sort through it later, right? So you can use it like that. Um, if you have a really large group um, and you want some specific outcomes from that brainstorming session, this, that's where you might find it more helpful to have some predetermined categories or more specific guidelines and instructions about how to use it. Um, but it's something that then the link can be shared, so it could be a living document as well. It's another um, helpful part of that of that tool. Okay, and I see a um, couple of things in the chat about yes, yeah, so if you're on a phone, how to participate or how to use it on the phone. Um, I believe that these are meant to be used or usable on mobile devices, but we'll have to look into that a little bit more about what that actually looks like and, and where you find those different controls on mobile devices. So we can definitely follow up on that. Um, okay. That is the MindMeister um, tool. And again, there are a lot of other, I mean, if you just Google virtual facilitation or virtual collaboration tools, you'll probably see more tools than you'd ever want to see. Um, so sometimes just it's a matter of kind of filtering through and saying, okay, given your audience, what you think their level of tech use uh, and, and comfort level is, like what tools would seem to be the, the best fit. Okay. We are getting close to the end of our time. Maybe um, before we start moving to our wrap up, do, should we see, Nicole, if there are any other burning questions? about any of the tools we've covered so far? Yeah, I think people are having fun exploring these, but there's some questions, of, as you mentioned, about using these on the phone or iPad, and I'm thinking maybe we wanna address that specifically in a future chat since we mm -hmm. often have a mix. Mm -hmm. yep. And as with all meetings, I, I would just add that whether they're on Zoom or live, a um, little prep goes a long way, so trying to practice these with a trusted friend or colleague, um, trying to do some setup ahead of time to organize, help people organize and contribute so they're not starting from scratch necessarily. Um, those are all just good practice no matter how you're doing a meeting. We've got a question about um, scrolling up to see all the chat messages. Yes, you can just use your cursor to scroll up and down and you can also click on those three dots um, and save the, save the chat. Okay, and our final tool that we're going to demonstrate, this is also in the handout that we sent you. This is called Wheel of Names. And uh, if you can see on my screen, this is something, so again, speaking of the advanced preparation that Nicole was just mentioning, this is one that, um, that I prepared last night, actually updated this morning because there were a couple new registrations. So these are 
basically all the names of everybody that registered today. And so this is a great just web-based tool that you can use uh, it's a spinning wheel, and I'll click it in a second. So you can use it um, either for games, if you're doing, you know, some kind of fun interactive game during your meeting. We're going to use it to give away a couple raffle prizes today. Um, you could use it if you're wanting a way to, a fun way to call on people. So you could have all your meeting participants in here, and then you spin the wheel, and then whoever it lands on is the lucky person that gets to <laughs> answer your question or, or, or do whatever you're asking them to do. So today we're going to, um, both Nicole Les and I are each going to uh, offer a 30 minute kind of free coaching slash consultation session with one of us to help learn how to use these tools or practice using these tools or ask us whatever questions you wanna ask. And so we're gonna spin the wheel four times so that we give away um, four half hour sessions in total. So I'm gonna click on this wheel And we see it spinning. And so is Isabel Tensor on the, still on the call or on the Isabel Tensor login? Isabel, if you are on the call, let me check the print box. We'll have you unmute yourself. I see Isabel in the participant box. Isabel, do you want to unmute yourself and say hi? Yes, she yes. says yes in the chat box. Okay. Hi. Oh, you're a lucky winner. <laughs> well, thank you very, very much. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I really appreciate it. And, uh, um, I, I, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, we'll follow up with you to, to coordinate and then probably depending on schedules, we'll, f we'll just figure out whether it's Nicole Lezen or, or me that, that gives you that half hour session. Great. So let's well, go ahead and, you. You're welcome. Thanks for being here today. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel again. We'll do this three more times. And so again, this is the part where you must be present to win. So we'll see if Esteban Ortiz. I don't see Esteban in the participant box. Esteban, if you're here under a, under a different name, do you want to announce yourself? Okay, let's do this. I'm going to keep going a little bit faster. Becky, is Becky on the call? Okay, Becky's gonna wish that she had joined the live session. Let's do this one more time live and then if uh, if the next person isn't on the call live, then we'll, uh, Colas and I will spin the wheel afterwards and notify the winner. Then we'll take the hint, Nicole. <laughs> Giselle, is Giselle still on? I think this all left earlier. I saw her on the call earlier. Okay, so you get the gist. Um, this is another fun tool that you could use in a variety of different meetings. So uh, we'll pull us and I will spin the wheel. If anyone wants to stay on afterwards just to, to see the actual proof of who the winners are, then. <laughs> the, uh, um, the raffle monitors, yeah. Yes, because we can actually see who the participants were that joined us live today. So uh, it'll still be, as long as you are here live, if your name gets uh, picked, then we will contact you to, to set up that half hour session. We will, um, and um, otherwise Isabel will get a two hour session. <laughs> 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 um, thanks everyone for, for participating today and for all the positive comments and for your interest in um, be, being better Zoomers. Um, we welcome your suggestions always, but um, the, the sample documents and tools that we use to get your ideas for, uh, for chat topics were real. We really want to know what you want to know so that we can help uh, meet those needs to the best of our ability. So stay tuned for um, a link to a, a follow-up 
survey that Nicole Young is going to enter into the chat, and you'll also get uh, a follow-up email with uh, the document that was shared earlier that has links to everything we just talked about um, in case you had to step away for a moment or, um, or just need, need that. Um, it's nice to have sometimes the other, the other documentation as well. And we'll, we'll, we're still trying to firm up um, some details for next week, so stay tuned for that. But we're trying to hold these generally on Tuesday mornings at 10, so same channel, different topics. Um, look forward to seeing you in future weeks, and thanks so much for joining. We'll, we'll hang out a bit, um, just in case people have other questions or we have other raffle winners. Ciao. Thank you, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Okay, so Nicole, I'm going to put the wheel again so that great, great. you can pick the name if anyone wants to. It's so fun, the wheel, with the little confetti and everything. Yeah. And can you hear the sounds when? I can, yeah. <laughs> Lord, of this, Lord of this song, Nicole, I saw that she was. Okay, the Lord, Lord of this, this. number two. Isabel was one. Okay. Eileen has a quick question. Go for it, Eileen. Hi, Nicole. Hi. Uh, I was just wondering if you've had any experience on um, ways to facilitate voting when you have a large group like this um, and you need, I mean, I, I the the post-it thing, that was really great, but when you're sort of like conducting a board meeting and you need to get people to vote mm -hmm. but not talk over each other. Uh -huh. And have an official I have not done that on Zoom. Can you call? Oh, yes, yes. Um, the because then okay. you actually um, have settings control for whether or not it gets saved. And you can also see who voted with anybody. So that's not a good thing. And then you actually get the results of the poll to everybody. But the polls don't, polls don't show up in the recording. Just so okay. Yeah, they're, just they're a document right there. Okay, great. Thanks so much. That's totally helpful. See so you on the same idea. Thank you. I have a simple question. Sure, go ahead. Right. So we, we facilitate meetings usually not more than 10, 11 people in it, and we go around and do a two minute check in. But it's without having to just call on each people, each person, we also do a couple of other round robin things. Is there a way that all the participants can see themselves either alphabetical or in any order? Because it seems like everybody, you know, everybody sees it differently. So I have to call each name. Mm -hmm. uh, is, there, is there a way to, to do that? So that, so that like all of you are looking at the names in the same order. Like right now, I'm looking at a screen. Nicole Lesson's on top. I'm in the middle. Nicole Young's after that. Then there's Eileen Hill, Jessica Wolf. But I, I don't know what happens. What, what if anybody else is seeing it? So, do you know what I'm saying? Am I saying? Yeah, and mine, mine's a different order from yours. So that's, right, and yeah. that's why it hasn't worked when I've tried it before. Just saying, okay, you go. You know, having them go in order, they're they're confused. So I have to. It's not a big deal, but I have to call each person by name. I also have a co-facilitator, so it would be just really easy if if there's a way to either alphabetize or if it wasn't so random the way you do. Elena, one of the things I'm, I'm doing, I just shared my screen. Um, oh. So there's the video tiles, which I think is what you were referring to, that yes, it, it, it appears differently for different participants. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is have the participant window also open, which you can see like I'm at the top because I'm the host. Um, and Wait, who's talking now? I can't see hear who's talking. I can't see Nicole, who's talking to me. Nicole Young. Oh, this is Nicole Young. Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, there you are. And then do you see, yeah, do you see, so do you see, you should be looking at my screen that has the yeah. gallery view of everyone. I'm, now I see, and, every, and everybody's reversed sort of yeah and okay. so the the participant list is um yeah. i find more helpful so i guess one question is are you all seeing the participant in a yes. similar way yes. i'm seeing it and i use it but mm -hmm. i use it with the people in the group but it they don't have it in the same order you know what i'm sa saying like like I'm seeing your list, it starts with you. For some reason, I'm under that. 
then Nicole Lezen, then Jessica Wolf, then Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Uh, Donna, Laura. But but in when we do the groups, everybody sees it differently. And so in your so if you open up your participant window. Oh yes, you mean you? So you're saying I should screen share my window? Um, do, when you're looking, when you open up your participant window, does it list it in the same order as what I have, or is, or is, are you saying that yours? Oh wait, oh I'm sorry. Too? Yes, let me do that. There are 14 people on now. Elena, and... uh, it might help sometimes the top two switch depending on who's a speaker and co-host and stuff like that. But after that, it should be the same as what you what you. So so you, yeah. Nicole, and I. You and both Nicole's might be in a different order, but starting with Jessica, it should be the same. And I think Elena, you might be yeah. at the top because yeah. you raised your hand. So I'm going to lower your hand. Oh. Okay. And you can see that then your name mm. dropped back down. Um, and I think that I'm going to try this time. I'm going to mute you and Jessica for a second. And so I think what it does is. Um, if someone has raised their hand, it bumps them up higher in the participant list. So it helps the host notice that. Um, if someone, so a moment ago, both you and Jessica were unmuted. And so I think that's why your names appeared higher in the participant list. So if everything is, if everyone's kind of treated equally, the host and the co-host will be at the top of the list. And then after that, if everybody else is muted and doesn't have their hand raised, it will appear in alphabetical order by first name. Oh, it's by first name. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And so that can help just kind of keep track of both yeah. who your participants are. If you're trying to get a sense of, okay, who do I call on next? That could be one way to just make sure everybody, um, again, is muted or has their hands lowered. And then it will still, like the video tiles will still appear differently, I think, for, for each person. And I'm not, I don't know, I haven't heard of a way to control that. I don't know if you have, Nicole or Jessica. I, I have not, but I, I just learned something. I did not know that that's how the participant list order shifted. So thank you. Thank you. Do you want to add something, Jessica? I was just going to say, I, I learned something too. I was over there writing. Um, yeah, it's, 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 there's so much in the Zoomiverse to explore. There's yeah. just, it's, yeah, it's endless. It's true. And I wanted to mention, you know, we're trying to highlight some tools that we have found helpful and used, but Zoom itself has some great video tutorials. And if you have the time to go through their site a bit, they have very specific and helpful things and they've gotten much better, I think, um, because so many people are using Zoom they've made an, a real effort to make their um, tutorials user-friendly and accessible. So highly recommend. Any other questions or tools that you all want to share that you want us to mention or include in our handout before we share it again? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to stay on to say hello and uh, and thank Hi. you for this resource. Robin McKean, um, who was on earlier, passed this this link to me, and I just think it's wonderful the, the whole core mission. And uh, I was wondering if you might actually send that slide of your eight. Um, it just yeah, I just I, I love the interconnectedness and those values, and and wouldn't mind um, seeing how my clients and how my I myself might fit in to your what you're doing more. Jessica, so. we'll we'll send you a link to a folder that's got all kinds of core stuff. Oh that's great. This is wonderful. Just that one slide. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for doing okay. this. Thanks for your interest. Yeah. Thank you very much. I have to go now, but okay. but it's been lovely. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, thanks everyone Thank and you. we hope you're, you're oh, and Donna you are on the call. Great. You're our number three winner of a half hour session. <laughs> <laughs> and hope your your next zoom meetings are very lively so thank you